Hello and welcome back to Bespoke Addict YouTube channel. I'm Lee Morrison. We're at the final stages of um, the restoration of this pair of uh, shoes. This one's not been touched, it's still in its original state. Um, this shoe is at the final stage. All it needs now is a fine layer of clear polish. Uh, let's put that one out of the way. So far, the, um, the shoe is, this shoe has been stripped of old polish. It's been um, shrunken with steam onto a, onto a more suitable fixed tree. It's been resurfaced with abrasives to take away all the cracks, uh, scratches, chips. Um, it's been moisturized and recolored, and now we're just about to um, repolish with, with, a, with a clear polish. Um, there is, if you can look at the two shoes, there's quite a difference. Um, this one's beautifully tight now onto its, there's no sort of floppiness. There's no bagginess, there's no stretched areas. It doesn't, the skin doesn't move. The original shoe was very, very stretched. You, you, can, you can really sort of move, move the skin about. Um, it, it is stretched by probably 10 millimeters across the vamp and a similar amount around the edges here. It become very floppy and baggy with use. I do love these pair of shoes. Um, I've had them probably seven or eight years. They were a gift for my wife. And I really enjoy wearing them, but like anything with wear um, become become sort of degradation and I just really wanted to sort of return them to a much more presentable condition I'm extremely happy with how you know how the uh, conditions revived then the previous four or five videos show in intense detail exactly what was involved so um, we, we, we need various cloths um, actually we'll discuss what type of cloth to use for a polish now this polish is it's just going to be a light finish we're not looking for a military shine like a, a glassage that's a totally separate totally separate video and it does take a lot of time to achieve you know the glass light finish i'm not going to be doing that here i'll present a separate video at a later time um, as i say it takes an awful long time you, you know easily you can spend an hour but it's not uncommon to spend two or three hours on the polish of one pair of shoes i'm looking to polish these and give a respectable finish in less than 10 minutes and that's what we're going to be doing here um, to give a very nice smooth finish you've got to use an extremely soft cloth now this piece of cloth it's a very old bed sheet that's been washed and worn and boiled and washed and tumble dried and it's very very soft it had actually started to rot a little bit so I've, I've torn it up and that makes a, a beautiful sort of polishing cloth um, this is actually, um, it's an old silk sock, um, it's, it's a lovely fabric, but there's a hole in the sock and I use it for more for applying polishers. Even silk is actually slightly too coarse and abrasive to give a, you know, to give a really po uh, polished finish. The, um, the, the fabric just isn't fine enough. This is silk and it's just not fine enough. Um, on a glassage type finish or an extreme polish, when you, when you rub with a slightly rough fabric, you'll get thousands of tiny little scratches. But exactly the same if you were to use a brush. Um, to get a very basic finish, you can, you can polish with a brush. Um, it will give a, a shine, but looked at carefully, there'll be millions and thousands at least of tiny little scratches from the hairs. So we're not going to be using the brush for this shine. And once again, this, this, this cloth is enormously too coarse. It's, it's soft, but it's, it's very coarse weave. It's like um, the sort of thing you might use for polishing furniture but, or, or cleaning, cleaning, cleaning the sort of uh, the plates, but it's definitely not adequate for, 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 for applying polish. So we'll get this one out of the way. We'll get the silk sock. We won't be using that. Get out of the way. And I've got two here. One, you know, this one oh, I'm going to keep completely dry and this one's going to get damp. These are the old sheets. Um, extremely soft. Um, it's the sort of thing you can buy probably from a second-hand shop for very little money. The she you know, the sheet might not have any real life left in it as a bed sheet because it's simply too warm. But you know, to sort of chop it up and put, you know, to use it as a, a for, sh for shoe polish, and these are perfect. All right, let's put the dry one out of the way. So far, this colour and the, the, there is a reasonable shine on there, and that's been achieved from the um, the moisturising cream. It's a moisturiser um, with a colouring in it. It isn't a polish. Now that you can sort of you can buff with a with a soft brush, clean brush. You can buff that up to a respectable finish. And I'm just going to give this a quick a quick lick over just to make sure there's no remaining dust. Very important to get down into the into the welt in the stitching area. Make sure there's no dust, any little bits of grit or anything. Um, but yeah, that's an adequate sort of shine. It's um, you can't see the scratches 
the, the brush, if we were using clear polish, the brush would leave thousands of little scratches. This, this cream simply doesn't leave a shiny enough surface for that to be a problem. So there's no need if you're just going to rely on the cream uh, to, to use the soft cloth. But because I'm so happy with the colour, I'm not going to use a coloured polish. I'm going to use entirely clear. And I'm going to be mixing this with water. Um, water is important. Um, it stops the. Let me just wrap this around my fingers as I'm talking. And the water stops the polish from dragging. So I tend to just wrap this around. I'm going to do it with one finger, slightly, slightly more flexible with one finger. Nice flat piece of the um, cloth. Anyway, um, so I'm just going to take some of the uh, some of the clear polish. And I'm going to dip this, there's a wee bit of water in the lid from the polish tin. You can apply it straight from the tin, um, but it's, it's very hard polish and it does tend to, tends to drag, drag on the surface and you get little lumps, it clags up. So if I, if I mix it with water, just dampen it slightly, it reduces the friction and really allows you to, you, as, you, as you're rubbing, the friction uh, melts the polish. Um, with, with the water it allows it to glide more easily. If I'm just using straight polish, the, the, the friction will melt, but then it, it seems to dry very quickly in little bumps and ridges. So let's have a look, keep the cloth quite flat on the tip of my finger. Nice good bit. Now I'm going to go for just a bit of water. Not, I don't want it sort of dri dripping water everywhere, but so it's definitely wet. So I'm just going to give the whole shoe a quick, a quick lick all over. Little more polish, dab more water, and uh, working quite quickly. I just want to give a good light colouring everywhere. More polish, more water, and uh, once I've got a complete covering, a very fine film everywhere, I can start and build up in the areas where you would build, um, which is the toe caps and the the heel area. The areas that remain stiff that don't flex with wear. It's, 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 it's fine to build up layer upon layer of polish on those areas. The areas like the vamp here, where the shoe bends and flexes when you walk, if you build up a lot of polish in these areas, uh, the first time you wear it, it will just crack and you've got like um, a horrible flaky effect all around here. But of course the toe, the toe cap, doesn't flex as you walk, it remains quite rigid. So you can build up a lot of polish there. So more polish, a little more water. Actually, let's try and get some water in the polish itself. Yeah, there we go. All right, so I'm just working quick circular motions. And I'm actually going to give a little lick to the edges as well, just a little, um, just to give a nice sort of sheen to the edging of the shoe. All right, okay. More polish. You, you don't take big clogs, it's just a very fine film on the cloth, so it applies very quickly and the cloth soon becomes sort of dry of polish. So probably a maximum of two, in this area here where it's going to flex, a maximum of two layers. I've just put on one good one, let's give it a little bit more. But as I say, if you build it up too much in this area, it will simply crack the first time you wear it. But you can get away on the on the toe cups and around the around the heel area with many many more layers. I, because I'm doing such a quick job here, just to give a respectable shine, I'm not trying to achieve a military or a glassage shine. All the while, keep keep moving in circular motions. Um, but uh, three coats on the on the uh, on the toe caps in these areas will be fine. One or two just through here give a very nice finish. So let's get a bit more polish and apply. A slightly heavier coat on the uh, on the toe cap. You have to be careful not to put a lot of polish into the into the broguing. It will sort of go down in the little holes. It'll fill the holes. Um, it's a ghastly look, and you have to sort of fish it out. Um, on one of the previous videos uh, to this series, um, I worked away with a tiny little screwdriver, like a clockmaker screwdriver, just to fish out all of the um, the polish, the old polish that was in the broguing. But uh, if you go through the old videos, if you've not already seen them, you'll see me doing that. More water. So it's just a case of circular motions. And uh, as you rub in, the, you can feel the polish start to, to melt with friction. And uh, yeah, it starts to, it, it melts and it's very easy. Then it starts to stiffen very slightly. 
and that's where you risk dragging the polish so you stop go for a little more polish tiny bit more water actually a bit more polish and uh, here we go it's just a case of repeat and repeat and repeat so it's, it's a repetitive process so um, as I say to you, just want to achieve a respectable finish on this shoe. I don't want to go for a glassage military shine. I'll do an entirely separate video for that one later. Here we go. That's it. Um, more polish, more water. Let's move, let's build up a bit more around the heel area. I, I don't want to build it up a lot here. It's It will just simply crack when I wear the shoe. But, uh, we're just trying to achieve a good finish in, in 10 minutes or less. Okay, that's, oops. Now then, that has actually built up. Um, it's, if we zoom in, we'll be able to see that. Um, it's, uh, yeah, we've got a slightly rough bit here. So I need to go for a bit more polish, a bit more water. And I should be able to blend that back in. I don't think I was rubbing fast enough or hard enough and it's dried quickly. Right, see if I can do that. I have to press on a bit harder. There we go. That's it. Yeah, the, that's, that's it. It's uh, the, the, the slight little rough pieces of, uh, have melted. There we go. More water. More cream. Yeah. It's very important to use the water. I don't think I'd used enough water, quite frankly. And uh, yeah, there we go. That's it. Okay, so that's it. And uh, just keep rubbing, keep rubbing. You can feel the, sh the shoe start to dry as you're rubbing. And this is quite dry around these areas now. Still a little bit wet on the, uh, on the toe cap there. And I'm going to use my brush just to just to stab away at the broguing. Some polish, like I mentioned, has gone into the broguing and I just want to fish it out before, before it hardens. That's it. All right, let's try a completely dry piece of the cloth, see how it feels. Ah, oh, yes, that's beautifully dry. Because um, once, once the polish is applied nicely and smoothly and evenly, you don't need the water, so you can use a dry bit of cloth that's still wet around there. We'll come back to that. Give it a few minutes. So it is a repetitive job. It's actually surprisingly physical. You do get fairly warm doing this. But, uh, okay. Okay, let's, uh, there we go. So yeah, it's still, still a bit damp, yeah. That bear is still damp. I won't be able to give a nice shine to that cap there until it's dried. So let's just um, go from the other cloth, which is totally dry, and do the other areas of the shoe, just working in circular motions. If I if I do use if I do use a brush, it's a very soft uh, uh, natural hair brush. This one, if I use that to uh, try and try and achieve a shine, there'll be thousands of tiny little scratches. So we're not going to use the brush in this instance. So. Yeah, well, that's lovely. Still waiting for that to dry. There's still water in that area. So it won't take long, just a few minutes. But um, yeah, for a more intense, deep luster, you just keep reapplying this, um, this, uh, this technique, just keep reapplying the polish to these, the back areas and the toe areas. You could put 20, maybe 30 coats on there and you get a real enormous buildup and intense shine. But do remember, you can't do that in this area here. Anywhere where the shoe bends and flexes while you're wearing it, you can't, you can't polish that much. It just simply cracks. Right, let's go back to my damp cloth and I'll use a dryish area of the damp cloth. Just try to encourage it to dry. Yeah, but it's nearly dry now. Okay, that's getting there. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna try a totally dry, actually there's a minutest bit of water in the, in the polish. Let's just give it, just there we go, that's it. That's better. Yeah, sometimes you can use too much water. I think I might have done that. That's better. Yeah. 
it's um you get a feel for this as you, with practice um it's a bit like it's a bit like anything you uh you just uh you, your hands become quite sensitive to the feel when there's enough or too much or whether the polish is starting to drag it's um it's an acquired skill it takes a bit of time a bit of practice but it's quite a it's quite a it's quite an enjoyable thing to do actually especially when you get such a beautiful finish there we go that's it yeah i've managed to get that smooth it's just gone slightly lumpy but uh, not anymore that's it so let's wait for a few minutes for that to dry I'll tell you what i'm going to do whilst i'm waiting for that to dry let's pull that out of the way and um i've got to uh to rethread the laces in this is the original lace it's in reasonable condition it hadn't um let's just put a, uh, a white cloth down so you'll be able to see it it's the original lace um, but it's it's a bit bit mangled um it's all it's all twisted and i like flat laces um, these are 2.5 or 3 millimeter flat it's just a personal taste i like flat laces i'm not keen on round but because they've been used they're all sort of swizzled round and twisted i'm actually going to iron them with a with a steam iron. i'm just going to do that right now so i've got two towels on my table i've got a hot got a hot steam iron over here and i'm just going to just run the lace straight through and if i can get a nice flat bit then i'll be able to pull the lace straight through like this <laughs> it seems a bit uh, insane ironing laces but flat laces need to be flat and you can't really allow them to twist and, and bend over they look utterly dreadful there we go so let's just do that one more time so i'm just uh, shove the lace in on the tip of the iron and uh, and pull it through it comes through flat it feeds itself through flat there we go so these these laces look really lovely and um, there's plenty of wear left in these and that's it that's uh lace nice and flat let's put this iron out of the way we'll turn it off okay all right we'll come back to that lace in a few minutes let's see if this is uh see if this is dried whilst i've been yes it has right so i'll go for my dry cloth not the one that's got the water on it and uh just do some circular motions. Oh yes, lovely. And uh, yeah, we're nearly there, that's it. Um, I could probably spend three or four minutes with a very, very dry cloth, um, just increasing the intensity of this shine. Um, as I said to you before, this is just a quick, a quick, pleasant polish. This is not a, a professional sort of uh, glassage finish you know that's a totally separate video which i'm very happy to share with you it's at a later stage um, but uh, be under no illusions those levels of polish take a long long time um, many many hours to achieve the uh, the true glass finish but for most circumstances this is good enough this is good enough it's, uh, it's a lovely finish and uh, i'm absolutely thrilled with the with the uh, the way the shoes come out yeah that's that's enough all right let's put that out of the way i'm just going to re-thread the lace uh, where is it here it is um it's there's no right or wrong way of threading laces I'm, i don't even know what this particular method is called it's a, it's a method i like so i always go from bottom bottom right to top left and that'll be roughly about right and I literally thread them through and through. Um, other, other people sort of, uh, there's so many methods, but this is the method I always use and uh, there's no right and wrong way. So let's quickly pull that through there and I'm trying to all the time keep the laces, because they're flat laces, that's twisted. Let's pull that out a bit. I'm trying to keep any twists off the flat runs. So it's a little bit fiddly, but it's worth the extra effort. We've come this far with this shoe. I'm not going to spoil it now by putting twisted or you know mangled laces back in. Uh, they're a consumable item laces. They last a little while, then they fray and break. It's a little bit like the tyres on your car. They don't last forever. And um, a new set of laces in a scruffy old shoe can... Uh, well, actually, the, scru the shoe might not be that scruffy, but if the laces get scruffy, it brings the whole appearance of the shoe down and um, can work wonders, you know, putting you know, a two or three pound set of laces in a in an old shoe. These these pair of laces are relatively recent. Um, I've probably changed the laces 10, maybe 12 times 
um, in the time that I've owned these shoes. And um, here we go. That's uh, just a little. Uh, that's it. A little tip. Um, let's have a look. Let's just pull pull all the laces tight. Let's see if they match up. Oh, they do. Purely purely by chance, actually. But um, for instance, if if the laces didn't match, sometimes when you when you when you pull the when you pull the lace, imagine that's tight. You've got the, the, the different heights. Um, with with this method, what you can do if you take the other lace and join the tip, which is just in my finger there, um, that will that will that's fifty percent of the of the diff distance um, just on that bend there. Then I can take the tip of this lace and put it in that corner there, and then you can see the bagginess. So I will then pull that bagginess back out and pull it all the way through. And slide through, then the, the, you know that then appears on the other side. Um, as it happened, the laces were correct in the first instance, you know. So now they're deliberately wonky. So let's turn it back the other way. Uh, so bring the tips together. We've got halfway, 50%. So that one's quite baggy. And then let's pull that bagginess through the other way, all the way through. And in theory, the laces should match up. There we go. The uh, the two tips match perfectly. Um, it's just a, it's just a little tip, and uh, it works every time with this particular method of lacing. Let's just get that. Yeah, let's just get that flat. So that all, all 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 the all the lacing is nice and flat. And and there we have it. Um, it's uh, it's a very nice shoe. It's relatively simple methods that I've uh, showed you and I do hope you've enjoyed this um, this particular series and um, there's plenty more to come I've got a huge amount planned to show you many different techniques many many repairs um, modification uh, techniques and um, they'll all come over the next few months and um, I do hope you've enjoyed this series and um, please give us a thumbs up if um, if you found this enjoyable or useful and uh, do subscribe to the channel Thank you for watching. I'm Lee Morrison. This is Bespoke Addict YouTube channel.